general and that sort of thing too. That Cameron, I, I, when it was about 15 or 16, he was at the Queensland camp up there, and I mean, working for the QRO, you know, you get to see kids, you know, at those camps and have a bit of a look at them. He went very close to player of the camp that year, and he was in my group, and, and you could, he just had, has this very, very cool manner about him, you know, knows the right thing to do, you know. Um, he's, not, he's not someone loud, uh, he's a very quiet uh, person, uh, but boy, like I say, he does his talking uh, with how he plays. He does his talking with how he plays. Very smart player. Um, and, I, and I suppose that gets down to if we wanted to go to, from a skill factor, he knows how to work poor defence in markers and poor defence at A, B and C defenders, but he also knows how when they're good at marker and they're good at A, B and C, how to bring out some faults in them defensively by running good lines having, and players pushing up both sides of the ruck, give him some options, don't they? Okay, but he can work good defence. Okay, it's not always about poor defence. And, and, and Dummy Hart's taken those opportunities. It's about knowing how to work good defence to create opportunity. And he's, he's very good at that. Of course, that left foot kick, you know, the 40-20s. And the, I think he won a grand final for... Uh, uh, St. Br uh, Brothers down at Logan. Logan Brothers uh, under 15, under 16 kicked the field goal in the last 10 seconds of the match. Okay. So he, he's got all of that. But uh, he's uncanny. Billy, Billy Slater. Now Billy's probably another person that, you know, he's love of the game. You know, it's just, see Billy's got that big watermelon smile and just loves to score tries, loves to run. Uh, loves to play. Cooper Cronk's another one loves to play. You wouldn't get three better gentlemen than those. You know? Dallas is a little bit different because Dallas will want to hurt somebody. Dallas wants to get out there and tackle you. You know, hit hard. And uh, I remember once I took him off in the Queensland 19 side and uh, the first year he was there, come off the interchange fence and he was dirty. He was really dirty. You know, but I'd take him off. You know, pull me over, come off, blah, blah, blah. take the rest of Dallas, sit down. This was his first year of 19. He was captain the next year. I made Dallas captain because I knew when things got tough, Dallas will never back down. You know, he's a different type of person that, that I wanted captain in that, in that next year. Cameron led, leads by his skill and the way that he plays. Um, and Dallas, Dallas is, you know, when I picked him as Queensland like, uh, as captain, and um, it was just if it gets tough. And you know that them games are going to get tough, don't you, against opposition like that. You know, who's going to get out of the trench for you? You know, who's going to cart the ball up off the line for you? You know, and, it's, and, and at times, who's going to make that tackle? You know, we've probably all seen Gilmeister, Dallas Johnson, going back, Dean Lance, pull off that inspirational tackle and some, some stuff. With the player, there's another little story I'd love to use to tell the players, but... His name was Jason Hetherington. Is everybody? Yeah, yeah. Jason Hetherington. When I was with the with the Jets, Jason came there, and man, did he, you know, he tough, tough person, come from of a cattle station, and, and uh, you know, how do you get, how do you, you know, from the sort of scene the footy show, how do you get revved up, Jason? I'll turn on a bit of Johnny Cash, you know, and uh, Daryl Halligan's kicking well today. Yeah, you'd hate to be his dog, wouldn't you? <laughs> and all that sort of thing. Like he's dry, but but, but uh, remember, like in a minute, we're doing push-ups, fist on the ground, hundred push-ups. And then follow that up with 75, 80 sit-ups, uh, elbows to the knees, you know, sit-ups. He was tough. Anyway, um, he played Queensland residents, couldn't get a go. No NRL club wanted to look at him, okay? He went to uh, Chris, uh, Steve Anderson, and I don't know Gary knows Steve Anderson pretty well, but Steve Anderson took him down to the Gold Coast when they were going. They said there was a 10,000 transfer fee on him because he, he'd, um, he'd, um, Played for Queensland in the residence, right? And uh, and the Gold Coast had some problems with paying the ten thousand dollars. Jason says, "Is that your problem?" He said, "I'll pay the ten thousand." He said, "You give me a go." So they give him a go. They went on to play uh, Queensland State of Origin, um, probably yeah. Yeah, and Canterbury. Um, played for Australia Super League. So somebody's seen something in him. Uh, 
when, we, when they come to a club, it's about creating a, a, a learning environment. Okay, they've got to enjoy learning. Um, some of the players, of course, one of the big things that was with the Melbourne Storm was the role models okay, that were there. Um, we used to take them to Melbourne, bring them into camp, and they would uh, immediately meet the team, go around, shake hands with the team. Okay? I can tell you there's some exceptional people with the Melbourne Storm, right? and I can say that their careers have been extended because of that. Right? The Scotty Hills, the uh, um, Matt Guyers, okay? exceptional people. They'd be, they would not go and talk to them. They'd be straight over with the kids. What's your name? What do you do? Okay, all that sort of thing. There's some <coughs> other people there that also mix very well, and, and their name's Rodney Howe, Danny Williams. Right? They were there because they were great club people, great team people. You know, they wanted to they wanted to win badly, and they might have done some other things that weren't so good. But in that club or that team thing. Rodney Howe, and I mean, you know, with the drug problems and all of that, Rodney Howe, for anybody to go and watch him, how he trained for his limited skill, okay? Amazing. He drove the physios mad with that knee. He'd go there for eight hours and say, what do you want me to do now? they do it. What do you want me to do now? Well, i go and get some ice on it and come back. He was there eight hours a day for eight, ten weeks, twelve weeks wanting to get back on the footy field. Right, so part of that culture is having good role models there. Okay? Um, having success, you know, having the success of course at Melbourne, <coughs> people like Glenn Lazarus. You know, and I mean anybody that follows the Broncos or the Melbourne Storm or the Canberra Raiders all would know the success that he, he brought to those all tax by by his being a good role model. Uh, and, and having that. That's important to have that in the, in the club head coach, you know, he certainly has a philosophy, everybody knows Craig Bellamy, you know, he's, a, he's like a little Napoleon, you know, he's very, um, a bit like Ricky Stewart, I suppose, it's interesting that a lot of those good coaches come from Canberra, from under Tim, Tim Sheens, but he's very direct, Mark Murray, I, when I was there, Mark Murray was coach also, and Mark's very similar, Mark's a school teacher, you know, and uh, I've got a lot of respect for Mark Murray, you can see why he played for Australia. Um, very tough on himself, very tough on the people around him and what he expects, he expects from people. But um, great, good person. You know, morally, Mark will always do the right thing. You know, there's never any question with him or John Rebo about <coughs> doing the right thing. Um, well Mark, I always remember like with the kids and just getting messages across, Mark was always saying about giving simple messages you know, and giving them direct uh, to kids. Uh, I remember once he welcomed them to the Melbourne Storm, sitting down just like you guys were, you know, and, and thanking them all for uh, you know, coming down and showing them all the opportunities that were available in the club. And okay, he went through all that. Terrific speech. Terrific speech. Welcome to the club. Went to sit down. Oh, he said, one more thing. You're going to be a fucking dickhead. You may as well fuck off now. We won't tolerate it. <laughs> sat down. Okay, what was the message they got? Okay, short, sharp and direct. Okay, doing your A program, just getting back to what we did at Norse. Um, we wanted some, you know, as a senior club, we wanted some, uh, we wanted to, we had a, uh, what would you say, obligation to the junior clubs to give those kids a go, coming through, right, to try and get them to Queensland Cup and to, uh, and to uh, NRL <coughs> level. And, and, you know, there's been quite a few of those players that have come through, the Will Chambers and the Jake Webster's, Smith Semau, and quite a few that have been signed by the Broncos mm -hmm. and Melbourne Storm as, uh, as recruited players, the Ryan Hanson, Young Whittle and Lock the Cry, and those sort of players. So, um, I've always believed that if we coach well, right, the talent's in our own backyard. You know, we don't have to go to New South Wales or Zealand to find this talent. Okay, let's do the best with what we've got there. Okay, and we wanted to get that balance. Got good players coming through. So we developed a junior A program. Um, I think when, we, when I went to Norse, there was only five international.
national teams. And we had no 15, 16s or 17s. We had a 15 B team. So what we knew that there would be a lag, but what we wanted, of course, from a club point of view, was to get a 17 A's team. 